Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, the channel. Well, I mean, I, I guess this is on EAFC24, but uh, this is just my daily talk. So, you know, uh, take with what you see with what you will. I'm still on champs and yeah, really late in the game right now. Oh yeah, I did about this then. I stick it to ladder right now, by the way. So, you know, it's a good stuff. But hopefully he gets upgraded. Hopefully today, if he did let him play and, you know, he scores a goal or two, you know, they, they win. Anyways, uh, Euro Talk, first of all, uh, before I get into one of the bigger ones. It's safe to say my predictions is uh, 50 out of 50. You know, 50 50. Because I did predict that Spain was going to win, I did predict that Germany was going to win. Unfortunately, uh, I did not think Switzerland would beat Italy. And uh, I thought Slovakia would um, would run England out of the Euros, and uh, that didn't happen, unfortunately. So my predictions are pretty much 50%. But let's kind of discuss a little bit of what happened, because I, I really want to get into this a little bit. So first off, um, Spain, Georgia, that one felt pretty obvious to me. I did predict a 3-1 victory for Spain, and they exceeded my expectations by scoring four. So, you know, it, it, either way, it's a win is a win. <laughs> so, already my bracket was looking, uh, like, it's looking pretty nicely when you look at it that way. Um, Germany versus, um, uh, who was it again? It was Germany versus, oh, damn it, how, why am I forgetting already? Oh, hang on, I gotta look this up. I don't know why I'm forgetting already. I'm, I'm so dumb, and I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> I could have sworn I remembered. Uh, let's see here. Oh, it was, uh, it was against, um, hold on. Oh, yeah, it was against Denmark. Ah, oh, man, how could I forget about Denmark? I'm so stupid. But, uh, yeah, Germany versus Denmark, um, uh, 2-0. I uh, just need to look up the scores. But, um, yeah, uh, Denmark put up a pretty good fight, but, uh, unfortunately, you know, it was, it was not enough. And, you know, I think I predicted a 2-1 uh, victory for Germany, but Denmark didn't score one, so that was already off. All right, now let's get into some of the bigger ones that I've completely fumbled the bag on, right? So, um, Italy versus Switzerland. All right, I predicted Italy was going to win this game. Uh, no particular, like, score, really. I did kind of say maybe, or, um, I, di I didn't say it in the video. This is just, like, predictions, like, during the game itself, right? I predicted Italy was going to win, like, 1-0, right? And, you know, that's mostly out of, like, huge respect for Switzerland. I thought that they both were kind of, like, evenly matched in a sense, you know, they were both, like, you know, in a sense, they were both, like, in their best time, they were both, like, well, not in their best time, but Italy was starting to, like, get into form a little bit, you know, they went, they put up a good fight against Spain, they put up a good fight against, you know, you know, they put up a good one against uh, Croatia, stuff like that. And so, I figured, you know what? Italy, you know, is going to give Switzerland a hard time. And then, you know, it's going to be kind of even. But Italy is going to go up on top. What I didn't expect was for Switzerland to completely figure things out. Literally almost for minute one. And, you know, it kind of makes you think, like, wow. Like, did these guys, like, was this over before it began? Because the way Switzerland were playing... It was stifling. It was like, it was stifling for like Ita the Italians, right? Because it seemed like, for the for the better part of the entire game, um, Switzerland just had total control, and they didn't. They 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 dictated the pace. They completely dominated the ball. Um, they gave Italy a lot of uh, run for their money, you know, and it kind of it kind of surprised me, you know, because I. I legit thought Italy was going to give up a good fight, right? Like, like you know, I did predict Italy was going to win, but, you know, looking at that game, you know, kind of made me think, like, were they even ready to begin with? Because Switzerland came out with a plan, right? They had a plan, and it worked out perfectly. They maintained possession. They slowed down the pace for Italy. They um, completely defended, like, fully defended when they needed to. So, you know, the Italy, all they could really do is just pass it around and try to find an opening. But, you know, when they couldn't, that's when it, it all just, um, that's when it all fell apart. And so, I saw Switzerland, and I'm just like, wow, I'm, like, genuinely impressed that they managed to make it that, you know, to, to do it like that. Because now it just gives me, think, it gives me, like, time to think. Like, wow. Um, can Switzerland really go far? 
and I, you know considering how weird this side of the bracket is for um for the euros it they, they're, they're very well could be a chance it really just depends on tomorrow's games you know um or today's games rather if you're talking about you know france belgium portugal versus uh slovenia right uh which i think portugal and uh, slovenia are part of the same side the netherlands and romania are the ones that are going to come out tomorrow and that's in the same bracket as you know um switzerland and all that stuff right so i look at this right and i'm thinking to myself like switzerland are looking pretty strong i mean uh so is austria and we'll have to see how they play tomorrow against um how they play tomorrow against turkey eh? but you know the way i see it it's like well there could definitely be a chance right that you know switzerland could make it pretty far there could be a dark horse in this tournament considering how they completely manhandled um italy so you know keep an eye keep an eye out for them right they're very impressive performance really good job by switzerland italy is officially out so you know there's that all right now let's get into the big one that i want to talk about england versus slovakia right this game uh i predicted slovakia was gonna win um when i predicted the score it was around like one nil that i thought slovakia was gonna win and for the better part of 95 minutes that was the case slovakia was winning one nil England was struggling to score a goal, and uh, it seemed like it was all said and dusted. And then, of course, almost in the final minutes of the game, all of a sudden, Jude Bellingham decided, you know what, let's show, let me show up now, and uh, decided to pull off a bike kick. And I'm just like, okay, well, dude, you you just you just um you almost did, you know, you were practically invisible throughout the entire game, right? And I and I'm not saying that he didn't do anything or nothing or anything like that, but Dude was was being called upon the fans to get subbed off with along with Harry Kane because they both were not playing well, right? Because when you, uh, it's the same it's the same issues and you know um, Goldbridge mentioned it too. Uh, Goldbridge mentioned that they got lucky, they got lucky by that goal because if that goal had not gone in, if England would have lost, not only would our our you know well obviously our criticisms of England or would be justified but e either way it would be justified even just looking at it from this perspective but Southgate would have lost his job and that would be a huge blow for English football wouldn't it um yeah that English that that Jude Bellingham goal literally saved not just England's England's um chances at the Euro for this year but he literally saved his manager's job which you know it's pretty much bad news for english fans because they've been they want southgate gone they don't want him anymore and they want they want the reason to be justified you know and i look at this game and it's the same issue right uh, slovakia for once they were the ones that had to be on the back pedal but they kind of had to it's not because it's not it's not by choice right they don't have the same quality as the english players do but only now when they're they're down that's why all of a sudden, oh yeah, we got to attack now. Now we got to do it. And it kind of showed just how much of a problem it is offensively. Because even in those opportunities where they had the ball, where they had every opportunity to score a goal, all of a sudden they just can't seem to score. Harry Kane was struggling. Jude Bellingham is struggling. You know, um, Saka and Foden just can't seem to, can't seem to you, know, you know, capitalize on those opportunities. Especially Harry Kane and you know people were calling harry kane to get subbed off and you know this and that like if anything even if even if they um, even if harry kane ended up scoring the goal that would end up like sealing the win and during extra time people still would have wanted harry kane to be gone because you had a more dynamic front forward you have ollie watkins you have ivan tony and by the way ivan tony was the one that they brought in right and he immediately made an impact that he's part of the reason why they even scored that goal in the first place because if, if he hadn't then lordy lordy man they would have they would have been um there would still be tied all the way to extra time and they would have got probably gone to penalties you probably would have gone to penalties and so yeah again it's a bit of that you know luck factor i suppose right and by the way like even after they scored that 2-1 goal you know what they immediately did they immediately went to park the bus again what do you know and slovakia had plenty of opportunities to score and, and that and that extra time this in spite of how tired they were in spite of their exhaustion right and it's the same criticisms over and over and over again it's the same it's the same problems right so again it's like 
I'm not going to say it's a... Okay, I'm going to kind of say this, right? I wouldn't say it's an undeserving win. But it was a very lucky game for England. It was a very fluky game, right? Because do that kind of same performance against Spain. Do that kind of performance again, probably against even Switzerland right now, right? The way they're playing right now. No way would you beat a team like Switzerland the way they played right now. Slovakia, they got away with it, right? Switzerland, no chance. The way they played are against Italy, no way, no chance. That's where I draw the line. And guess what? They're playing against them in the next round. So I wish them luck, I suppose. Um, and they have plenty of it before it runs out. So who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe um, they saved their luck for this tournament, I suppose. All right. But in any case, um, here's one of the bigger topics I wanted to talk about again. Mexico. Mexico and, pro and by extent, the United States. Uh, it's not looking good for the United States and um, Mexico uh, this is the day after I'm recording this the day after they played against Ecuador and they drew nil nil and so uh, I'm about to discuss it so here's the thing about Mexico right and uh, Copa America in particular right uh, we're starting to see a new um, we're starting to see a new change within the structure of you know the the power structure of the Americas right in a time where you see, um, you know, Mexico, you see United States, you know, you see all these ones, you know, obviously excluding South American teams like Argentina, Brazil, that have always been pretty dominant. You know, we're talking about the dominance in North America, Central, and we think to ourselves like, man, Mexico and, you know, USA, those guys are just like out of this world good, right? Or they're, they're pretty, they're pretty good. They, you know, they can compete. And looking at this squad for mexico for you know for the copa america i kid you not i've told people this before right i've told the people this before the tournament started before you know they started the tournament even when they were playing their friendlies this was probably the worst mexican side i've seen in my lifetime right and not just in terms of like you know you know tactical or anything like because i still don't know anything about, about, about like you know what he Lozano, like a uh, freaking Lozano does, the manager. Um, uh, I forgot his first name, but it, I know it's Lozano, right? But either way, I, like, I don't know much about his tactics, and they're, they're, they seem pretty decent, right? I'm just talking talent-wise. Like, talent-wise, the talent for uh, Mexico is just not there. At least not now, right? And, you know, I don't, I don't exactly blame him for it, because... Because let's think about it, right? Most of the best players that uh, f are there were in their prime for Mexico, they're not there anymore, or at least they're not in their primes anymore. You talk about Chucky Lozano, he's not even playing for PSV anymore. He got transferred to San Diego. He's back in MLS. We're talking about um, we're talking about Santi Jimenez. He is playing in Fire Nord right now, and he's he had he had his good like season, but it's not carrying through for the Mexican team, which is you know which is a problem. Um, Edson Alvarez, I can understand, you know, maybe that's part of the reason why they couldn't make it past the group stage because they lack that leadership in the midfield um, or at least they lack that extra oomph in the midfield. And so when um, Edson Alvarez got injured, uh, I could see why that's a big problem, right? Offensively, defensively, it's all kind of gone to, um, to Dookie, I should say, you know, and it's it, it, put you in, it puts him into like a position of like, well, you know, you thought you had it easy, right? If you're a Mexican fan, you probably thought like, oh man, like we kind of have it easy. We should be able to qualify. Um, not realizing that, you know, when I said they, you know, when I said they were the worst, you know, Mexican side I've seen in a long time, it's not because it's offensively so. It's because compared to this this team that they're going up against, the team that they're going up against, like I don't see this team like winning. I don't see this team winning. I see them struggling. And if they do win, it would be through just the single goal. It would be through close games. And funny enough, that's how it that's how it turned out for all three games. Against Jamaica, it was the one goal difference. Jamaica had the aerial advantage. They had the um, they had the you know they had the physical advantage, I should say. And if it wasn't for that shot out goal from, from outside the area, you know, and they and the one that they scored, it would have been a tie. Um, then it was, then it was the, the game against Venezuela. 
Venezuela outplayed Mexico. I I firmly believe that. And it's not like, you know, obviously you can say you can see the possessions and stuff like that, right? Whoops, sorry. I dropped my salt shaker. Um <laughs> but this cuz uh, let me take a look at the Copa America stats, right? Let me look at the stats from uh, Venezuela versus Mexico, right? Cuz I'm generally curious while I'm still trying to play FC at the same time. Um I think possession wise, the match stats, let's take a look. Uh, possession, they had 61% possession uh, against Venezuela's 39. Um, they had more fouls, more yellow cards, this and that, right? And yeah, for the most part, the goal was decided by a penalty, right? My thing is, is that Venezuela, you know, they had a lot of opportunities to score goals. They had a lot of opportunities to expand their lead. They had a plenty of opportun ample opportunities to, you know, make sure they had the lead at the beginning. And so, you know, they had good touches. They had great, like, you know, tiki-taka football. Um, they played very well uh, in spite of the possession, you know. Because possession can tell you one thing, right? It's just how long ago, you know, obviously it just tells you how long a, um, a team holds on to the ball. But... It doesn't tell you how they utilize that possession, right? So, I say Venezuela definitely did make most of their, uh, you know, most of their time to try to create opportunities, even though they didn't materialize the way they wanted it to. Overall, um, they definitely have plenty of shots on, def plenty of shots, but you know, less shots on goal than Mexico did because it was just mostly through the desperation at the end of the game. And so Mexico just couldn't capitalize. They're lacking that offensive power. They're lacking that offensive, like, you know, um, mojo that they had when, you know, when players like Chicharito, when players like, you know, even like players like Raul Jimenez, players like uh, Chucky Lozano, you know. You know, they're, they're missing that aura for, uh, for what it's worth. They're missing that aura that will help them push through. And, you know, they don't have that right now, at least not yet, right? Because they have plenty of players that play for, for Europe, so, like, don't get me wrong. It's not like they're just picking all these players from the M the Liga Mekis, right? They're not playing. They're not picking all these players at random from the Mexican league, right? These are t players that should be playing in Europe. You know, there you have like you know players that play for Greece. They play for you know the, the you know in Greece. They play in Netherlands. You know, you have the, you know you have that one player in Alvarez who plays in the Premier League. You know, um, and so I'm just thinking to myself like then what does this team need in order for for them to you know get over this hump because right now the way it looks it's like then then i if they weren't even the better team in their group where does that put them because it puts them worse than venezuela puts them worse than ecuador so where does that put them and i'd say it just puts them in a position where they are in the rebuilding phase of their you know of their lives right now or of their lifetime because this team is relatively young. Um, they have a new management. They have new management. They have new this and new that. So pretty much everything is new. I'd say this is just a rebuild. But, you know, I just mean it uh, like the worst team as a regards to like, yeah, the talent. Because, yeah, because there's they're relatively new. It's not like they're it's not like they're like super experienced or anything like that. The only experienced ones really are just Edson Alvarez for the most part. And Santi Jimenez is just breaking out. So, you know. It's just a matter of seeing, you know, like how they progressed past this and if they, if they can get better by the time the World Cup rolls around. Because right now, it's not looking good for Mexico, but that's just the beginning stage. So maybe just give them a pin, uh, you know, just a pinch of salt, right? Now, the U.S. The U.S. is what I'm more interested in because they're the ones that have no excuse, right? For me, they're, they're the ones that have no excuse as to why they're in the position they are right now so right now they have one game uh win one loss so they're at three points right they're at three points and they're tied with um i believe they're tied with uh let me just take a look i can't uh the the, um, the things are not loading up give me a second let me just uh go to google Let's go to Copa America, Mr. America. Uh, there we go, nice. And um, let's see, Copa America 2024. And let's look at the standings for Copa America 2024. I'm multitasking right now, bro, and I'm doing well. Look at this, look at this counterattack. Oh, pass it out. 
The Catala. Ah. The Catala. Ah. All right. Anyways, uh, let's uh, let me just defend this real quick, and we'll take a look at the standings. Okay, so here we are, Uruguay and USA. So they're tied for um, they're tied uh, with three points. But you know who's behind them? Panama. Panama is behind them uh, with three points as well. So what do you know? As it stands, if if Uruguay, which right now they're in the best form right now, Uruguay beat USA. Which they likely will. Uh, it's not. It's definitely not a. Is a. <laughs> it's definitely a real possibility that could very much happen. Believe it or not, Uruguay could uh, could be could take the top group, and we'll stick them with uh, you know with those points, right? The they'll USA will be stuck with three points, and Uruguay will you know advance thoroughly. Well, they're already advanced, right? But They'll have the nine points. They'll have a spotless record there, and they will advance to the next stage as the lead, as the group leaders. USA, however, will have three points, and it depends on whether or not Panama loses, or if um, yeah, pretty much if Panama loses. Now, the big um, the big factor in all this would be the goal difference. However. It really depends on how bad USA could lose. Because keep in mind, Uruguay are in the best shape. They have the best players right now. I honestly think they are favorites to this, win this tournament, uh, other than Argentina and Brazil, you know, the obvious ones. But think about it this way, right? They just came from beating 5 0 against Bolivia. They beat, um, they beat Panama 3 1. So they already have a lot of points. They have a seven goal difference in their favor. They have a plus, uh, they have a plus and minus of seven goals in their favor, so safe to say, scoring goals scoring goals is not going to be a problem for Uruguay. What is going to be the problem for the USA, however, is going to be by how many goals do they score by? You know, how much can they withstand it? Because if Panama say they they um, they lose, right? If they lose by um, if they lose by one against Bolivia, then that means the USA would have to at least lose by like four for more or less like four goals to keep them alive and uh, I mean it is very much a tough one it really just depends if Panama draws or wins if Panama draw or win then the USA are out let's just let's just uh, keep it a buck here if Panama draw or win against Bolivia and the USA loses then it's over for the USA essentially um, because by then USA would have three points, Panama would have four, and they will be in second place instead of the US. So it's not looking good for the US. And I want to get into that topic again of like why I feel like they have no excuse. USA have every reason to be able to win those games that they did, right? They had every reason to, they had a good reason to win against Bolivia. They did. But what about the Panama game? What what happened there? All right, what happened there? So. We're talking about a game where they could have won the game. They had every potential to win the game. And yeah, that red card from Timothy Weah, that was one of the worst things you could have dealt with because that put you guys in a position where now you have to pretty much, you know, now you have to think to yourself, that red card wasn't worth it. And it wasn't because even though they scored the first goal, they scored the first goal, by the way, they scored uh, immediately after when they got the red card. And so, you know, you think to yourself like, oh, okay, well, I mean, the, at least the USA has got their head on the heels and, you know, they, they're at least composed. That wasn't the case at all. Instead, they completely cracked. Panama ended up scoring a, uh, to draw the game. And then later on, they ended up scoring to win the game, essentially. And it, it all points to a lack of composure from the US side. Because, you know, they had every opportunity to just, like, calm down, get reorganized, get composed, have your players calm down. You know, I know you have a man down, but, you know, in these moments against a team like Panama, you kind of have to relax. You kind of have to make sure that you're not in complete, you know, like, in complete, you know, just, you're not, you're not, you're not freaking out, basically. And instead, the U.S. decided to get frustrated 
they, they get frustrated instead of calmly going through the whole motions. They start picking, they, you know, and Panama knows this because they they're, they were the ones picking fights. You know, that's partly the reason why even like Wea got expelled because he was kind of like bugging him a bit, you know. And Timothy and Wea was the one that ended up throwing the punch, throwing the, throwing the kind of like elbow into his head, which you, you cannot do. That gives you a red card. So he lost his head. And Panama realized, well, geez, if we get inside all these guys' heads, then we're, can, we're definitely going to win this game. And they did. They got into their head. They got them frustrated. They started picking fights. And it worked because the USA, for some reason, felt the need that they needed to fight back and, you know, start arguing and doing this and doing that instead of just focusing on the game itself. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, if they had not just, like, uh, you know, let themselves get you know picked on and this and that they could have won the game they actually could have won the game but they let their emotions get the better of them and now they're ready to and now they have to go up against uruguay who are in their best shape in their best form and it's not looking good for them and so that brings up kind of like a question of like are they really faltering the the top like the top nations of copa america and stuff like that i wouldn't say they're they're toppling you know, Mexico is kind of going through a rebuild and the USA does have plenty of good players. I think it's just that the rest of the world is catching up. And, you know, it, it points to like, you know, how many players you look at from like Ecuador, you look at, you know, Venezuela, you look at all this, you look at all that. You look at all these players and you think to yourself like, these guys, you know, some of these do have the potential to like, you know, to, you know, they have better programs now. They are playing a much more better football. They're smarter now, so they're not like completely, you know, ordinarily like weak. Now every team is strong, you know? Everything can give you trouble. And so um, we're kind of seeing like the uptick of amazing like football being like recognized now from every aspect of the world now, especially from some of the ones that you were you would consider to be generally weaker than some of the top teams in the Americas. And now they're the ones that are like, you know, completely dominating the scene now. And that's a, that's a really good thing because it adds competition. It, you know, provides a, um, a competitive nature to the entire thing. You know, it gives you a sense of like, yeah, now these teams, you know, have to try harder. They have to fight harder in order to not lose their spot in the, in the, um, in the upper echelon of the entire football world. Because if they do, they will, um, they will basically gets sucked down into the worse one so it's a very interesting thing it's a very interesting um you know set of possibilities and definitely uh definitely something to look forward to as the future goes by but yeah mexico got eliminated usa is on the verge of getting eliminated if they lose and um yeah the euros are about to start in about seven minutes from my time so you know France versus Belgium. Here we go. But in any case, if you guys enjoyed this video, oh by the way, uh, let me just do a prediction for Belgium versus uh, France before the game starts. Um, Belgium, uh, I think they'll lose by one, and it's, I think they're gonna they're they're going up against a France that's kind of like competitively like you know kind of lacking a bit, but maybe they'll find their way. Maybe they'll reawaken when they go up against Belgium. Who knows? But it's going to be a 1-0 victory. And as for Portugal versus... Um, and as for uh, the Portugal game, I do think um, Portugal will win this game. Um, Portugal will win the game. Uh, I forgot who they're going up against. I think it might be uh, Slovenia. I don't even remember. Shoot. I'm trying to remember, but I can't. Uh, let's see here. Um, they're going up against Slovenia. Yeah, it was against Slovenia. They should win that game. They should. Um... But yeah, in any case, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you all next time. See ya.